Well, hello there. It's been... Man, it's gotta be like... September, October, November, December... Six months! It's gonna be over six months after episode 13. And, uh... Yeah, I'm back with more Hush Hush, everybody. Hello, 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 hello. Uh, just before we get started, I would just like to say quickly, thank you very much for 50 subscribers. It is, uh... I know I said it in the last video, but again, thank you very much, uh, for, uh, your support, um, to this channel. It really, really does mean a lot to me. And also, thank you for your patience for, uh, this video to come out, because, uh, it's, it's, it's been a hectic, it's been a hectic one, a uh, hectic six months since I last recorded, um, and, uh, I have a job and everything now, so, uh, so, uh, it is time for me to just relax for a little bit before I work again, and just record some more Hush Hush, so, hello, and now uh, we're recording again. Alright, so, it is July 21st, the last, last time that we did this, we, uh, went to see Al for the third time, or third chapter, and uh, now it is time to move on with the 21st. So, so we're at where we were the last times. All of this and cool stuff with our schedule. Basically, everything is complete, but we still have more to go. So, let's go ahead and uh, head to the cafe and see what is up. I am so excited, baby dance! You swing by the Queen Bean, but it appears to be closed. There's a sign that says, Gone Fishing, in one rather smar smarmy font. And another that says, No, be right back in 15 minutes. There appears to be quite a few customers outside, rather annoyed that they can't get their morning coffee. What do you do? Ding. Give a motivational speech. Stumbling up your inner fire, you give the, you give the waiting customers a rousing, almost Shakespearean speech on the virtues of patience. By the end of it, many of them are cheering and applauding. An old man wipes the tears from his eye in pride. Yeah! Feel like you've made made a difference in the world. You continue on with the rest of your day. Sweet. With queer. Oh, hey, Serena. Second chance. Oh, yes, yeah, second chance. It's been a while, so second chance. Game over, buddy. Got it. Sunday the, f the 21st. Ah! Wait, it's a Sunday? Oh my god, my days. It doesn't really tell me. See you then. Bring a saucer of milk. Just kidding. Just bring yourself. Okay. Close your brain. These are pajamas. Oh god. Get that one. <laughs> nah. Yeah. Actually, let's go to the coffee place again so we can Oh yeah! Aloha! And hello! Welcome to the Queen Bean Coffee House. Pardon me. It's just me today. But it's not so busy, so I have lots of attention to spare for you. What can I get for you today? I yeah, you're not getting much attention for me today, but a coffee. Here you are. Have a great day. I'm so convinced this, that's not tight. That's not fixed. <clears throat> what I'm saying is that I don't think they fixed it fully. Maybe they did, I don't know. This game has been fully released now for almost a year. But, uh... And by fully released, I meant most of the episodes that were released within that time uh, were in the early access days. So, it's fully released, everything is done in Diddy, and uh, we're in the full game. Fully released game now. But uh, let's head to the bakery and see what's up. 
Dropping by the bakery, you see that it's packed as usual. There's a lineup of people outside the door waiting to get their sure fix. However, as you get closer and look in, you can see that the lineup doesn't continue inside. In fact, the store looks empty. When you peer into the glass, you discover why. Oh. She's at the counter, talking to Bottom Bell. And you wonder briefly if it's about something serious. That's when you that's when you spot a box of donuts in Bottom Bell's hand. And inside is likely a casual conversation. Go right in! And so I said to him, Hands behind your back or I'm going to club you. <laughs> Darling, that might just be the worst pun I have ever heard in my life. Isn't it? I was, in all practical terms, completely disgusted with myself. But unfortunately, the suspect started complying immediately, and I didn't have time to follow up with an even better pun. Oh, well look what the cat dragged in, but somehow managed to keep looking fine. Hello, it's -a me. Oh. Hello, citizen. It's good to see you. Exactly the person I wanted to see to make me feel safe. Oh, and Fumi's here too. <laughs> now, Sugar, don't you go teasing Miss Fumi. She's done wonders for helping crack down on some of the crime in town. I wouldn't. No, no. Their soft-hearted jab at my role in the community is on point, Bonnebel. I can't tell you enough how much your eclairs restore my faith in humanity. Even just a little. Well, goodness, you're both going to make me blush. I'm glad you're here, though, citizen. Bonnebel and I were speaking about you earlier. We both agree that you have a talent for persuasion. The only thing we couldn't agree on was how much so. Okay. That's not really what I said, sugar. I was just saying that I enjoy listening to them talk. Mean face. Precisely. I enjoy listening to exactly no people talk, but you appear to be the exception. So I pose a challenge to you. Fermi takes the box of donuts from Bonnebel. Convince me to give you my favorite donut. I am speaking, of course, of the mighty Eclair. You have 12 seconds. Oh dear. I hope this is not a repeat of that time with the high school football coach, Officer Fumi. Nine seconds? Ding. Oh my. I am... I am not entirely sure how you made that sound so charming. Must... resist... for the... eclairs... Sounds like me when I'm trying to resist hamburger. Fumi strains for a few seconds, but then breathes out a sigh of frustration. <sighs> Very well. Here is your prize. Yay! She hands you an eclair, and it tastes like victory! Alright, I must depart. Miss Valentine? Always a pleasure. Citizen, I'll see you later. Okay. Fumi leaves and Bonnebel shakes her head and laughs. <laughs> Speaking of donuts, I swear that one is a few short of a baker's dozen. But she's good people, I think. Oh, anyway, darling, I gotta tend to the rush outside, caused by Miss Fumi's rather ominous presence. Y'all have a great day. Bye. Take care, sugar. Bye. Yeah, outside and the crowd of relief customers starts flooding into the bakery immediately. He hit the road with one or two people thanking you for driving away the popo. Oh, I just had a burger before this. Hamburger. Well, I got no other choice but to uh, do that. Hold on. Guide. I keep forgetting to do this every video. <laughs> like that guide that I'm using, which is uh, by Axeman.
if you're wanting to do a 100% completion on this. So, let's do this. It's quilt time! Oh wait, I should have saved. Oh no. <laughs> okay, hold on, let me just do this. Save. Uh, yeah, this one. <clears throat> Arriving home, you notice that a few of your neighbors are looking toward your house oddly. It takes you a moment to realize that there's fairly loud music coming from inside. You give, you give a little wave, mouthing, mouthing the word oops, and quickly unlock the door. Once you're inside, you notice the distinct smell of laundry detergent filling the air. The audio system is turned up to the max. Oh. Well, I was wrong. You make your way through the house to the laundry room, where you find piles and piles of clothes all over the floor. Go to sitting in front of the washing machine, watching the clothes go round and round and round. How oh, many choice? <laughs> oh, hello. You're home. Hello. You're just in time. Please get undressed. I need more dirty clothes for the machine. I tried on everything you own, just to make this last one. And I don't like putting on your undies, because they're not made for kitty tails. Okay, hurry! Well, maybe we can fold this laundry first. Wait, did you say, fold the laundry? Ugh. Show me. Sure. It takes six basket loads, but you finally get all of the laundry into your bedroom. Quill helps by carrying a few select socks, which she says are problematic. Oh, we're back in this bedroom. Start sorting the chaos into manageable piles of flights, darks, delicates, etc. Okay, so uh, girl creates a, her pile, her pile of, her own pile of interesting laundry, which is thankfully not very large. As you begin, as you begin the Herculean process of folding roughly four weeks of clean laundry, it isn't long before you notice Quill is watching you intently. Don't mind me. I just need to learn your secrets. If you could slow down a little and move your hands out of the way, I would really like that. Here, grab some socks to teach you my secret secrets. Oh, yes! I am so excited! Give me those socks! I promise not to chew on them anymore. You chewed on my socks? Okay. Be nice. The folding begins mostly quiet at first. Quill watches you fold a shirt and seems particularly impressed when you fold the sleeves and turn the whole thing into a perfect square. She attempts to feed herself but winds up mostly twisting it into a hot dog shape. Oh ho! Look at how much better mine turned out. Do you want me to show you how to do it this way? If you do it like that? If you do it like that, they all get wrinkly. They get all wrinkly and gross. I'm not sure that's as big a problem as you non-kitties think. I don't really think it is. You guys are always smoothing out this and straightening out that. Wrinkles tell you how loved something is. Yeah, she's got a point. I give you Maybe. five wrinkles if I could. At least four. Hmm. You continue to falling laundry, though it doesn't seem to be keeping Quill's attention. Several times her attention drifts away to something else in the room. She spends at least twenty minutes watching the ceiling fan and rubbing her face on your pillow. All right. You know, you say something to her. Half the time, she acts like she's lost in thought and doesn't hear you, like most cats. Finally, she stretches out onto the bed, rolling 
and several sacks of full laundry arching her back and making a high-pitched whine of satisfaction. Several sacks fall over the side of bed, tumbling to the floor. Then toss a sock in the air. When in frustration and capriciousness, you toss a sock into the air. The sock hits the chandelier just, just right. Strain dramatically off course. The sock flies across the room, striking a speaker. House plant. All the items fall to the floor with a loud crash. <coughs> no! Oh no! The plant! He killed the plant! That plant was my friend! <sighs> Please don't let them get me! Please keep me safe! I need a protector! You're the only one I've got. You spend a few minutes stroking Quill's hair, running your fingers through her oddly silky strands. When she calms, when she's calmed down enough, you rise from your seat and pick up the plant. After setting everything right, you sit back on the bed. How would that concern you, Lucky? Quill, Quill returns to you this time, laying, laying the side of her head on your lap. Mm -hmm. I know. I shouldn't have tr troubled. <clears throat> I know a lot of stuff. And I should stop pretending that I'll forget it all. And it'll go away. I told you that I saw something. Something bad. But if I don't tell you what it looked like, you won't know if something dangerous comes to the door. It's just... hard to remember. Start somewhere easier. Tell me how it made you feel. Oh. Okay. Oh! Yes, it made me feel... He gave me cold blood and a spiky tail. It made me feel like I was going to be killed. Yes, I know! I remember... A dark alleyway. It smelled really interesting. Like, very oily and planty. Also pee. I was... Waiting for someone. And I heard them. Who? And then... And then there was so much noise! And scariness! And horribleness! And badness! And get away! was quiet for a moment. Her we breathing rapid and her eyes wide in fear. And her features softened and she says with more curiosity than fear. A bad smell. Doggies. They pee so much to clean their stuff. It's not fair. Doggies are not friends. Don't trust them. I show them my belly to say, stay away! And it just makes them sniff me more. And that's when I peeked. And I saw what I was afraid of. It was a person. Ugh. I'm sorry. That's all I can remember. My heart is beating so fast. I feel like I need to be quiet now. Maneuver to her so you can lay down on the bed. 
further scattering your laundry piles, and you gently pull her in. She curls up next to you, nuzzling her face to your chest and sides. After a short time, the girl starts to nuzzle even more. Ah, she rubs her face on your chest and dags her fingers into your side, simultaneously tickling and prickling them. I'm not ticklish there. Thank you again for helping me with my... Uh... Everything. You're good people. Yay. I like you. And I trust you. Go ahead and get out. The last little while, it's been hard to feel safe, even indoors. But when you're around, I feel like things are better. And not just because you feed me. The funny thing is, even though you make me feel safe, being around you also makes my heart go faster. Hmm. Here, feel. What feel? Quill sits up, takes, takes your hand, and up. Oh. oh my god, I can't whistle. Do you feel it? You make my heart go faster. And I'm not afraid. Cool. I am also sort of a little afraid. Well, smiles, breathing a deep sigh as you run your fingers over and under her. <coughs> Mmm, that feels so good. I have more questions. <clears throat> I'm here for them. I have thought a lot recently about you touching me. Okay. I've been trying to figure out ways to trick you to pet me more. I like the feeling of your fingers in my hair. I like it when you rub my back. But the place I want you to pet me most No, I'm not gonna do that with them underneath me. It's down here. Every time I think about it, I get very warm. It's warm, really warmest. I'm not sure why, but this is where I want you to pet me. She takes your hand, delicately slides it off her leg under her skirt. <clears throat> diamond shape. She gently presses her fingers against her underwear. Oh, she gently presses your fingers against her underwear. She is indeed extremely warm, and there's a subtle moistness there as well. Girl gasps as you touch her moist area. <laughs> oh my gosh! That feels so good. I had no idea it would feel like that. I want... I don't know. I want you... I want... Go loses herself for a moment, squeezing one of your hands against her breasts. And the other... I didn't mean to do this! And the other even higher against her... Cletorus. Oh god, okay. Oh, well, good. He turned the girl into the little, 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 little. Okay. Girl reaches above her head and pulls her shirt off, her breasts bounce free one at a time, and she giggles happily and nervously when she's finally naked. Almost an hour, the two of you are lying next to each other, still painting. <sighs> There's a quiet push of sun enough that you, that you're a little startled when Quill cool suddenly speaks. Thank you. That was neat. Can I have my tail back? 
You hand it back to Quill. And Quill scoots off to the bathroom, presum presumably to restore it. She leaves the room only to suddenly poke her head back in. Oh! I thought of something when your fingers were petting that special spot inside of me. Alright, I shouldn't have put my glasses back on. The person I saw. I had never seen him before. And I had never smelled him before. Okay. I hadn't seen him because it was so dark. But he smelled really, really powerful. Powerfully bad. Okay. I don't think he had ever been near pee and garbage before. Hmm. Oh, sorry, okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay, bye! Cold disappears, and you decide that you should probably have a shower before you continue with your day. Okay, evening. You push the laundry off the bed. Your activities have generated at least another three loads for cool. In the shower, you reflect on the last hour of your life and quite come to any particular conclusion. But at least it was fun. Yeah. Night time. All right, all right. I can go for one more. Yeah, okay. A roll of thunder jars you, letting you know that it's going to rain. It was so loud that for a moment you thought it was going to rattle you to pieces. You dreamt of the five girls last night, each one holding you, each one telling you that, telling you they love you, but everything felt strange like you were watching from a distance. I have this sudden urge of bad things coming down the way it is. Alright, pull first. Syria, what do you got? Per woman. Okay, bye. I don't know what kind of chills I have on my, sp up my spine, but it's, it's something, I'll tell you. Hey, so, um, here's the part where I invite you out to a date. Out on a date. Usually it's the main but you could, like, you may smooth motion chill. You never know. That's true. I'm free tonight if you are. Honestly, the rest of the week is looking dicey for me. So, want to go somewhere fancy, like a fancy for a little while before we skip to the good part back in my place? Oh boy. <laughs> that is headed to high zone. Uh, tonight is. That, that fancy place on third. Awesome sounds well expensive. Hey, got them! I got the money. But if you treat me, I'm sure to treat you later on. And the treat is you get to see what's in. See me in a fancy dress. Yeah, baby. See you then. Yes. Hey, sweet cheeks. How's the week treating you? Good. You know, that was the start of it. Wasn't that like to talk to Marie? about what happened last time and maybe include maybe clue you in on why I've been such a disaster. Are you free for dinner on the twenty third? Where do you want to meet? How about I try to take you on to the winer? Get the face eat thing a try. Do it a second try. Do it a second time. Are you serious? You gotta take me up the hill and pull it? Flash back your chest. I got it in my hair. This is going to be so great. I'm going to clean it up to impress you. You will see. Winery. Yeah. So I have an idea. 
But please tell me if you think it's a bad idea. Because, well, it sort of feels like a bad idea. But that's exactly why I want to do it. I would like you to come over to my house on this afternoon. And I want to spend time with you. Alone. Does that sound like fun? Monday the 22nd? Damn! I mean, you can bring friends along. If you think it would be more fun to play board games or something. I'd love to spend... I would love to spend time with you. Alone. I know it's gonna happen. Oh, good. I'm gonna be honest, my heart is racing all the time in the south here. But again, I think it's because... Well, it's not allowed, and I want to break the rules, at least this one time. So, drop by and remember, if no one uses the door, I may have just fallen asleep. I'll give up pretty please. See you on Monday the 22nd. Whew. Alright, I think I have enough time for... This, uh... Oh. Go home. You know what? Go home. I don't think I've seen this. Oh, it's raining. As you drive through town, you get an unshakable sense that you should check in on Quill. You pull into the driveway and you can see over the fence into the backyard that some has someone has dug a massive hole into the lawn. You rush over suddenly, imagining, imagining someone forcing Quill to dig her own grave, or worse, Quill forcing someone. You open the back gate and run through. I'm gonna come face to face with Quill holding some sort of box. Oh, hello. Do you mind carrying this inside? It's mine. Good question. This isn't a shallow grave of some type, some kind, is it? No, but if you want to repurpose it, I won't object. Quickly, let's get inside. The box doesn't like getting wet. You help Quill carry the box inside. Even she wipes her paws on the welcome mat before sitting down on a chair in the living room. She eyes the box suspiciously, preferentially. She seems quiet. She seems quite taken with it. I know what you're thinking. This box doesn't have Quill's name on it. How can it be hers? Very rude of you to think that. But I like you a lot, so it's okay. But. I would like you to note that my name could be written on the inside. Hmm. Let's assume it's true. In which case, it's only one of the very interesting things inside this box. So we need to get in there, so we can convince that stuff to come out here, where we are. Are you following? Yeah, I'm following. You're moving. You're not moving fast. It's easy. Good point. I go really slow when I sit down. I guess you could say it stops me in my tracks. I'm pretty sure I know where the key is. But it's in the hardest place a key could ever possibly be to find it. To find it. If you can help me guess where it is, and help me open the box, I'll share what's inside with you. Okay, do it! Use your brain! You get one guess. The key is inside the box, isn't it? Yes! Oh, good job! You're a smart kitty! So now that we know where the key is, do you think we can open it? I think so. You cautiously grab both sides of the box, box lid, making sure you have a tight grip. Then you twist and pull with all your strength. This causes the lock to fail, and you break the box wide open. Causing mutton to go flying everywhere. Wee fun! Quill paws at the bills that as they float to the ground while you look inside the box. Inside you find taped inside a small plushy mouse and the word Quill scrawled at the bottom. You free the mouse and you hand it, hand it to Quill. Oh good! Thank you! Okay, you can have the rest. This is what I thought I smelled in here. 
Okay, bye. Bye. Quill leaves before you can ask any questions. So instead, you gather, you gather the money and count it. Yeah! $10,000 in the box. You pocket it and leave the house next to the fireplace. Not fully sure what to make, make of it. Then you leave and carry on with your day. Alright. Wow, everything is just an event. I am going to Ailish House. And I'll say that'll be it for this whole episode. This looks... This is very nice art, might I say. Driving to Ailish House, there's a suspicious number of birds watching... Why are they watching me? <laughs> they may not be watching you. But on the other hand, they might be. For a brief moment, you consider what the long-term events of being exposed to a kid girl in your house might be. But you do your best to push those concerns down. Sure enough, as you're pulling in to El Chiray, you can see her by the front sidewalk, talking to birds. It Bird! Birds! She's a bird owner! He's here. You then briefly consider if she's talking to a tree. Shaking the thought out from your head, you climb out of your car and slowly approach it all, a little perplexed by the coincidence. She gives you a big smile as you as you approach, but puts finger to her mouth, indicating to stay quiet. I'll be with you in just a moment. I think I finally made progress with Sweet Pea. That's right. It's an extra special day today. I brought company to watch you. I think, given all the circumstances, you should definitely give flying a try today. That big blue sky could use a few more feathers, and yours are just lovely. Won't you give it a try? Yay for the bird. Oh, did you see? Sweet Pea did it! The bird's name is Sweet Pea, that's adorable. Ah, oh, I'm so proud! I've been coming out here every day and encouraging him. I have all these little bird feeders out, see? But I never see him using them. Hmm. Hello, Sweet Pea. I was worried he was a late bloomer and too afraid to fly. He gave it his all, and look what happened. Yay! I especially love all the little birds in that tree, in particular, because my grandmother planted it when she was young. We call it our family tree. <laughs> Makes sense. Oh my word! I got so caught up in the moment, I haven't offered you a beverage or to take your coat or anything. Oh, would you care to come inside? Well, I mean, if I was stuck in a tree, you came to encourage me. I jumped too. <laughs> Don't be silly. You shouldn't jump off trees. You're not a bird. I can't 
can be. <laughs> but if you were a bird, I would be happy to feed you sunflower seeds and encourage your flying. I bet you'd be a wonderful bird. Peep peep. L looks. L hooks her arm in yours and hugs. Hugs your elbow as you walk together. She looks up at the birds and sighs. I'm sure a lot of people look up at birds and desire very much to be one. To be free to fly wherever you want. But every time I think about it, I get a little nervous, to be honest. Imagine a poor bird with narcolepsy. Sometimes I fall asleep on my walks. Can you imagine a poor bird falling asleep while flying? That, that could be bad. So, I'm content to give them seeds and let them do the flying for me. At least for now. Now, I don't know about you, but that little bird looked like he thought you were pretty darn special. <laughs> have been pretending that very thing was true. So either you caught me, or it's true. As you reach the front door to Elle's house, she pauses, stopping in her tracks and staring at the door quietly. For a moment, you wonder if she's having a spell of falling asleep and falling asleep. By a deep sigh sniffles, she's just considering something. Choice. Something wrong. Elle looks over to you and her eyes have a deep, thoughtful look. No, not exactly. Hmm. I've never had someone over before. By yourselves, I mean. Huh. Just family, servants, service people. Hmm. I've Never been alone in my house with someone before. Mm -hmm. I feel a little overwhelmed. You're the boss here, Elle. It's your choice what happens next. Elle's eyes shimmer with gratitude. She hugs her arm a little tighter. Yes, it is. Let's go inside. In we go. Oh, so cute in here. Even this, I like this. <laughs> Walking inside, the overwhelming pinkness of her of the room strikes you right away. <laughs> Real men were pink, I say. There are pink curtains and pink furniture, and the strawberry throw pillows and ma magenta curtains. My God, the unmistakable smell of cookies and tea fills the room, and your eyes catch an Nick Nick Leaky in the corner, likely hung and dry, hung, hung to dry and temporarily forgotten. Here we are, my house. I'll say this, it's nice. You'll have to forgive the decor. The interior decorator my family hired took a few of the themes a bit too far. But please, make yourself at home. I wish. Sometimes I wish I could make myself at home on vacation. Can I interest you in any cookies or afternoon tea? Don't worry, the cookies are from Bonnebelle's. No, oh, okay. That freshly baked smell is an air freshener I use. I feel a bit deceitful about it, actually. <laughs> cool fact, oh. Elle's voice actor drew the picture on the top of the chimney. Oh, that's what it is, huh? Kind of forgot about that. <laughs> uh, any choice? I would love some tea and cookies now. Freshly cooked steak. Oh, <laughs> bro. Not choosing that. I would love some tea and cookies. Sure. Wonderful. I'll go fetch them. I got out the fine china for today. 
I hope you enjoy tea parties. I never had one. I honestly adore them. I've even thought about getting a cat. Just so I could have some company for one. I should not say it. I'll be right back. Okay. L, L returns with a tray of cookies, teacups, and a teapot. Yeah, look at that right there. Uh, Melody Muse made that. It's pretty cool. She gently pours you each cup and set your cookie on its own saucer. <laughs> Any choice? <laughs> you didn't tell me how things went with Dorian after you pranked him. Oh, I didn't, did I? I'm sorry. Gosh, <clears throat> I've been thinking about it so much, I forgot that I hadn't really talked to anyone about it. Eh, you really should. But with me, I mean, sure. After Dorian told everyone to leave, he practically dragged me into our family's private room. He was furious. I don't think I've ever seen him so angry in all my life. <sighs> that was an experience. But, to be fair, I don't think anyone has ever embarrassed him so much, either. I mean, that's true. So, he probably had every right to be angry. Oh, that sucks. That was a quality prank, Al. Sisters should definitely push their brothers into bowls of water on their birthday. Not me! Yes, I agree. I'm looking into the proper paperwork involved with trying to make sure it's an annual tradition. <laughs> but don't be concerned. It didn't suck that badly. Mm. As you know, I had been drinking. Wait. Hold on. <laughs> this got me curious. Uh. Uh, continue. Due to the bad influence of my date, I'm sure you're aware. <laughs> and Dorian screamed and yelled at me for the better part of half an hour. Jesus. But every time he got mad, I started laughing. As you do. For the first time, he seemed so silly. Like I had made a mime upset, or a party clown. And the more I laughed, the more upset he got. <laughs> Until he just gave up. That motherfucker shouldn't parent you. You're fucking in your 20s. Do your own. He tried to send me home, but I told him I was going to go get cheeseburgers instead. Oh, I've been meaning to ask you. I don't have any experience drinking. Does getting drunk make you crave... junk food? Personally, no, because I never drunk alcohol at all. Any choice? I mean, when you do it well enough, you're not sure, but I often find Wrappers and pizza box, pizza boxes and funny spots. So, oh yeah, that happened. <laughs> yes, that's what I thought. Okay, good. Because I've been mostly forbidden from eating those kinds of food, and I thought it was peculiar that I wanted to eat them so badly. Hmm. Anyway. A long story short, I haven't spoken to Dorian since. It's only been a day. And I feel pretty happy about it.
For the first time since I can remember, I don't feel worried about checking in with him or being worried he'll disapprove of what I'm doing. It's a good feeling. Yeah. Thank you for helping make it happen. My pleasure. And mine. Elle smiles shyly at you and blushes. She strains her skirt for lack of something else to do with her hands. Oh. Uh, reaches over and picks up a cup of tea. Here you are. I hope you like English tea because... Elle is interrupted as she catches her foot on the leg of, the co of her coffee table. She drops a cup and saucer into your lap, and your crock is introduced to the fine feeling of fresh English tea. Oh no! Oh no! I'm so sorry! But it's spilling me? Huh. Yeah, that shit must feel hot as hell. But no, I, I felt hotter. Hot chocolate would be the thing. I'll grab some tea towel and it's pain back down your crotch. You pull away, but the close quarters of the couch make it impossible, make it impossible to touch. I'll squeeze this and pats your crotch for, for three entire seconds and realizes what she's doing. Oh no! I'm sorry! Oh gosh! <clears throat> you quickly take the towel from her. You continue the cloth-based fondling of your own, and now quickly gets her <laughs> hmm. She runs from the room, her hands covering her face. The door closes, and you can hear her sobbing. Um, luckily, English tea involves a healthy dose of milk. And the temperature on your privates can be can be best described as uncomfortably warm, rather than skittle trunk. Uh, what was the word? Oh, I had the word in my head for a second. You do your best to dry yourself, but there was a surprising amount of tea in that cup. Also, two lumps of sugar, that means that things are already getting sticky. Oh no! <laughs> Knock knock. You can hear Elle sobbing. Huh? Please go. I'm so embarrassed. I'm so slow and useless and clumsy. You're gonna make me cry. Please just go. Excuse me, miss. I was hoping for more tea. The first one was exhilarating. <laughs> At least she says. You'll have to excuse me. I've never served it in the traditional English style before. I may have made a few errors. Sorry. I just needed a few moments. Okay. When the thing you fear most will happen happens, it can really get you down. Oh dear, look at your pants. I didn't burn you, did I? This isn't tea. Clearly I wet myself. Well, thank you to not draw attention to it. Word. You are so wonderfully bizarre and interesting. Where does one like you even come from, I wonder? Beats me. We should throw those into the wash, just so you're not marinating in tea. Okay. Hold on. I'll see if there's something I can give you to cover yourself. Okay. 
What a royal bedroom. <laughs> Elle disappears for a short time, searching her house, but she returns empty-handed. I'm afraid I don't have much for pants that will fit you. Here, come here. It might be best if you just wrap a blanket around yourself while I wash your clothes. Oh, okay. Here, sit here on the bed and get under the covers and take your pants off. If this was an elaborate, oh. Um... Elaborate? Hmm. I don't get what you mean, but I'm sure it's very funny. Wow, tough crowd. Elle smiles and turns, turns it back so you can change. You remove your personal effects from your pockets and hand her your pants and underwear. Oh, oh wow, really? As Elle leaves to throw them in the wash, you wrap your blanket around yourself. It's sateen. <laughs> and feels kind of amazing. Elle returns to sit on the bench and bench seat and Pinchy at the foot of the bed. So, I suppose we should continue our small talk. It feels like that was hours ago. I feel almost out of breath. Where should the conversation go from here? Are these sheets satin? They feel amazing. Oh, uh, yes they are. And yes, I know. Sometimes, when I feel like I should treat myself, I go to sleep without my pajamas. <laughs> Do you mind if we talk about private things? There's so many things I want to talk about with you, but they're all... My family would call them inappropriate. And I'm terrible at making friends, and I'm awful at conversation, and I don't know how to bring things up like this, and... Yes, the woman! You shift closer... Shift closer to her and never so slow, you lean in to kiss her. As a moment, she stops talking, surprised by your sudden close, closeness. And precautiously close, seeking permission. Now that stays for a moment. At last dates from where she pulls back. But then she leaves in. So me as well and kiss you. The two of you make out for almost a minute. You gingerly open her mouth and coax her delicate tongue from her from hers. When you finish, you lean away and look at her. She stares at you with a dreamy expression and smiles. I I think you're okay with private feelings. <laughs> I want to ask you some things, but first, I would like you to ask me whatever you want. It'll help me decide what to ask you, so ask me whatever you're comfortable answering. Just to warn you, though, I may chicken out. I'll try not to, though. This is now the try to embarrass cell challenge. Oh boy. Oh, wow. Uh... <laughs> Sorry. I used to get asked that question a lot when I was a teenager. I'm always surprised to find out people are curious about them. I wear a size E bra. Excuse me, why? Do you like them? Shouldn't I have that karma? No, I don't have that karma. Do you like them? They've caused me a lot of problems. I try to ignore them, but no one else will. So I would say I feel pretty neutral toward them these days. So far, so good. I feel confident. Oh. <clears throat> Are you a virgin? I don't think I can say that, so um... Whatever. Are you a virgin? Oh my, very much so. Okay, Until I met you, I had never really even kissed anyone. My family impressed upon me to wait until marriage. Oh god. 
<laughs> oh, I, uh... Oh, well. <laughs> I'm so flustered. <clears throat> I touch myself in the shower sometimes. Not very often, but sometimes. I can't believe I told you that. Hmm. That's the most naughty thing you've done that no one knows about. Oh, goodness. I can't tell you this. This is so embarrassing. Here we go. When I was a teenager. Oh, gosh. My heart is racing. There was once when I dressed some pillows in my clothes. Oh. And pretended they were a lover. And on top of them, and... Oh, that's not bad. Teenage short horny. That is 100% true. I don't believe you. I'm pretty sure that puts me in a different category of horny teenager. Oh, gosh. Please forget I told you this. Maybe. I don't think I'm ever going to stop blushing from embarrassment. Wow, what's your most intimate fantasy? Oh, this one is... Uh, this one is sort of fun. Well, I mean, I don't think it's embarrassing. I think it's sort of intimate. See, because of my narcolepsy, I can't really take baths. There's a chance that if I spend any amount of time in one, I could fall asleep and drown. But I want very badly to take one. So bad that I have fantasized a solution. Someday, I want to take a bath with someone. I want them to get in first, and I want to sit on their lap. And they would wrap their arms around me. I would feel them underneath me. <clears throat> and they would kiss me and touch me. Suck on me. And... I couldn't even stop them if I wanted, because I'm completely helpless. And they explore and pleasure themselves with me. And if I fell asleep, they would hold me and keep me safe, and kiss me in my sleep. That's not so bad. As <sighs> I stare off in, into the distance, as she sighs a long and lustful sigh. That would be heaven for me. Okay, I would like to ask you some questions now. If that's okay with you. Okay, but I'm going to be imagining stuff about the things you've told me. Forgive me if I get distracted. Yes, after a moment she giggles. This feels so odd and rude and weird. I like the feeling. Are... you a virgin? <laughs> no. In spirit. In spirit. <laughs> I... I don't think that counts. Damn it! But who am I to say? I'm not fully versed on how to do it myself. I might have accidentally had sex sometime, and wasn't aware of it. Oh boy. So next question. Do you think I'm... attractive? Like, I know you think I'm pretty, but... I mean, like... Do you think I'm... sexy? <clears throat> You're the most attractive person I've ever met. I can't stop thinking about you. She's second on the list. R really? Do you mean that? I... I've never felt that way about myself. I have no idea what you see in me, but I... I'm very happy you feel that way. Okay, last question. Are you seeing anyone else right now? <clears throat> I mean, are there
there other girls or guys Day. that you're with? I'll tell you. <clears throat> but if it's doubt in your mind that wants to know, don't feed it. You're better than that. Oh. You're right. I give a lot of attention to my doubts and fears. And that question, are them being hungry? There are better questions to ask. Sorry, I know those questions are odd. But I've been so sheltered all my life. I feel like I've been in a birdcage. A round one with no hiding spots hanging in the middle of the room. And every moment I spend with you, I feel that cage open just a bit. All this time we've spent together, it's meant so much to me. Everything about you is... So alluring to me. You make me want to pull pranks on my brother. To drink wine. To drink beer. To mix them together and drink them anyway. Beer. The last few weeks, I've wanted to wear mismatched socks. I want to wear red underwear and pretty bras that show too much. Every single thing that my family has controlled about me, I want to Smash it, and throw it in the bin. You have made me excited, and hopeful, and powerful. My family would never let me date. And now, I want to choose who I love. I want to choose who I'm with. I want you. So, will you... Go steady with me? What's the right expression? You lean over to begin to kiss her. Man, that was so good. <laughs> she raises her hands so and softly places them on your cheek. Well, Ella's kisses grow, grow more and more passionate, and she hesitantly begins to fret. Oh, baby! There is an innocent awkwardness to it. Every moment you feel she doesn't quite know what to do with her hands or her tongue or with mine. <clears throat> wow. Then she slowly leans back and lies down, pulling you gently on top of her so that she can press it you against her. Her hands rub your back. She's her legs. Ah! Well, she pulls back for a moment. Is this okay? Are you uh, enjoying this? Do it! She allows you to answer her questions by kissing her. She sighs and makes soft moaning. Oh! You almost got me there. Uh, mm. Everything about her is soft. You press it, press yourself against her enormous breast. You feel the warm nape of her. <clears throat> Finally, I'll stop to catch her breath, and she gently touches your cheek. I want. I want to make love with you. There it is. I want you to be my first. You sit up for a moment, sliding back, and the two of you pull her skirt off. You take off her shirt. Now takes your hand for a moment and says, I think I might... Listen, if, if I fall asleep, you can keep, you can keep going if you want to. And if... Suddenly, Ella gets a distant look. Her eyes become in immediately drowsy, and she falls asleep. Huh. You sit back for a moment, 
You're not sure what to do. You start by gently tickling her rib. Bend her foot. Sure enough, she doesn't ruse. You're not sure how long you have until she wakes. Well, what do you do? Search the house for any clues. You quietly get up from the bed and begin to search the house. A quick search of the house yields several things to note. But you're not sure you have time to check them all. In her bedroom, you find her diary, along with with a stack of papers marked urgent and confidential. Let's look into it. Let's look into it. In the living room, you find a safe behind the picture frame. It looks decently high-tech, but doable. Well, what do you do? Check the papers in her room. As quietly and delicately as you can, you remove the papers and her diary from the drawer and sit to read them. You quickly scan her diary to see if there's anything important readily apparent. There are a lot of recent entries about me. Hmm. Some talk about how kind and interesting you are. Some of them talk about how nice you mm. My butt's not nice. Come on now. I'm just kidding. It's alright. There's one entry that just has the word sex and marriage underlined. Most of the early entries before you came to town seem unimportant. Al complains about doing a few times, but in a few that praise Bonneville's cookies. There's one entry that describes a dream Elle had, where she, oh wow, she seems like, she seems to have liked it, but found it confusing. The diary only goes back a year, so you move on to the papers. Inside the sealed folder, you find a number of medical records. They appear to be related to Elle's narcolepsy. Seems Elle has taken a number of different medications to manage her symptoms. She's only seen a number of specialists. You find a referral from one doctor to another, apparently with a slightly different speci speciality. specialty. You will list among these documents that actually appear to contain more of a psychological assessment. It's from when I was very young. Five or six years old. At the top of this board, it says, In concurrence with reports of themes of in details unearthed during psychological, psychological evaluation, it is the conclusion of this panel that patient Reed, Eleanor Reed, suffers not from type 1 but type 2 narcolepsy. Symptoms are consistent with severe neurological trauma. As a result, um, as resulted from a blow to the head. God damn, did it. it is the opinion of this panel that the step sibling, which incited the injury, Tori, should be temporarily removed from habituating the same environment as patient in Calgary. Additional notes. Trauma is consistent with blunt force trauma. The instrument used was likely a hammer or a baseball bat. Beside the papers inside, I see another reporter underneath. Although Alma Reed and Dorian Reed are not blood siblings, they seem to share a strong familial, familial bond. Frequency of Dorian Reed's behavioral incidents have decreased by half since. before she comes to. For a moment, Elle is confused. Her eyes start around and blink unseen. That recognition returns to her eyes, and she smiles and whispers. You waited. Uh, oh, panties. Oh. Wait. Give her a moment to catch her breath. 
we keep going, we're going to have sex. Are you ready for it? I... Okay, I'm ready. I... I would like to go on top of you. Please? You want all this set up? Oh my god! Finally, you collapsed together and utterly spent and whispers in your ear. Thank you. You're incredible. Finally, only ten minutes later, she's asleep. Oh, great, it's raining. You quietly let yourself out, grabbing your pants from the washing machine, and head out the, the front door. Outside, it's begun to rain. The birds are all gone from the branches, in and now. The rain plays a soft melody on the roof of your car, and the drive home is rather dreamlike. Well, <sighs> that'll do it for me, everybody. Um, it was nice to be back uh, doing this. And, uh, and I will be definitely doing more of this soon. Uh, hopefully not within six months, because I actually do want to continue this. But uh, I don't know why I'm getting the jitters in me. I don't know why, but uh, I'm sure it will be fine. So thank you everybody so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please do make sure to leave a like on this. And uh, we have a comment down below saying what do you want me to do next. But uh, if you are new and happen to find me in some random place or through recommended by YouTube's recommendation, please do consider hitting subscribe because uh, that would mean a lot for me and that would continue doing support. That would continue the ongoing support that is this channel, including the ongoing support for me because, uh, yeah, I want to do more of this. And, uh, but if you're an existing subscriber, Please do share this video with your friends. It's uh, it it'll be it'll help continue the growing support and uh, help me make more fun videos in the future like this. So thank you again, everybody, for watching. I'll see you all in the next episode. See you later. Mm -hmm.